Joining me now to talk about Donald Trump's looming legal issues, and there are many, former Trump attorney and fixer Michael Cohen. He is the host of the Mea Culpa and Political Beatdown podcast. He's also the author of the book Revenge, How Donald Trump Weaponized the U.S. Department of Justice Against His Critics. Michael, good to see you here tonight. Look, I have to say, first of all, when it comes to Trump, you called it. He did not testify today. You were adamant that he probably would not. Why do you think he ultimately did not? Because he's scared, and he's rightfully scared. Everybody's talking about how, you know, potentially the lawyers gave him the right advice, that he finally took the right advice. Knowing Donald for a decade and a half, I can assure you, it had absolutely nothing to do with advice of counsel. Hmm. He knew that this was going to sink him. He knew that he could be brought up on a perjury charge. And so instead, he decided to go with the easy way out and make the claim that he's already testified, he's already given enough, and then look to see what he did. He starts to put out on his social media platforms all the attacks, because again, mm. Donald cannot be at fault. He attacks Judge Ngoron. He attacks um, Attorney General Tish James. He attacks me all in one single post. You know, when you look at all that combined, you're right, his counsel did allude to the gag order. But, of course, one could avoid offending a gag order in testimony. And he certainly knew weeks ago that he'd already <laughs> testified. So that can't be the reason. But I'm really curious about this, Michael, because, as you well know, Trump's image as a successful businessman, it was very crucial to his win back in 2016. This serves to maybe be an instance when he would not have that power, would not have that brand anywhere near where it was even in 2016 in the public's eye. How will all of this impact the 2024 campaign? Well, you would think that it would have the same effect, right? They voted for him because he portrayed himself as this great businessman. I'm really rich. I'm much richer than people even know. And they bought the brand of Donald Trump. It is irrefutable that that brand is completely tarnished. But that's not going to stop the loyalists. They're now loyal to the brand, even though the brand is tarnished. So they're not stopping. And I'm talking about the MAGAs that are so entrenched into the cult of Donald Trump that they don't care. They're more about the brand of racism and sexism and misogyny and xenophobia, homophobia, Islamophobia and anti-Semitism than how much money Donald has. Well, we'll see ultimately how that turns out. But let me ask you, I mean, you heard this lead story. You heard about the news tonight about Jack Smith leapfrogging, going right to the Supreme Court, saying, I'm not going to wait for the appellate courts to weigh in on whether Trump has presidential immunity for everything he did while he was in office. He leapfrogged. This is not Trump's motion. It's not Trump's team's filing. It's Jack Smith. Is he outsmarting what is likely to have been Trump's strongest claim here? It doesn't take much to outsmart Trump's legal team. Oh. And Jack Smith is a beast. Jack Smith, Jack Smith is a beast when it comes to this. He knows exactly what needs to be done. And he's doing it really incredibly well. Um, he's not going to let Trump do what we all know Trump does best. And that's delay, delay, delay. And so he, yes, Yes, you're right, Laura. He beat him to the punch. He beat that whole legal team to the punch. And he's now going to have the Supreme Court weigh in on it for an ultimate decision. I mean, could I you wonder, imagine yeah. that a president is entitled to immunity for life on anything that they do? I mean, it just it goes against the very fabric of our Constitution and American democracy. They're making the president into a king, which, of course, is exactly contrary to the, you know, the Constitution. That's the exact argument of the lower court, the district court, who said, look, basically, just because a president, you are a president, doesn't mean everything you do then becomes presidential, so to speak. But let me ask you about Mar-a-Lago, because we've got some pretty exclusive reporting tonight, Michael, that a former Mar-a-Lago employee, now a witness in the classified documents case, there are a lot of cases that that former employee was contacted by Trump and his associates in the months after he quit his job and offered, of course, legal representation to this person. He got complimentary tickets to a golf tournament offered, repeated reminders he could come on back to work for Trump. What do you see when you hear about these interactions and these 
come on back moments. Yeah. <laughs> well, Donald needs to understand, and so does his team, that Mar-a-Lago is a cesspool for leakers and people who don't want to get caught up in Donald Trump's problems. And so there's as many people as that are there are as many people who are potential witnesses for Jack Smith and other investigations. And I'm, I'm shocked. Uh, first of all, <laughs> when he offers them free tickets to a golf tournament, you realize that those tickets cost Donald Trump less than if he got him a burger at Mar-a-Lago. Wow. It cost him absolutely nothing. They're generally at his golf course with Live Golf. Right? It cost him absolutely nothing to have the guy go there. I mean, there's thousands of people that show up for these tournaments. What's the difference if two, four, six, eight people additional show up? There's no cost within which to get on. So he's offering the guy nothing, absolutely well, how the lawyers, nothing. Though? How and about Offering lawyers, Michael. How about offering him lawyers? Good. So I'm glad you brought that up because that was next on my list. Remember when Bob Costello reached out to me and what they tried to do is they will load you up with a lawyer for the sole purpose not to protect you, but to protect the king, to protect Donald. They are passing along all the information. And let's also not forget, this happened with Paul Manafort with his lawyers, when his lawyers were passing to Donald's lawyers all the information that they were supposed to provide to committee, to the congressional committee in the interrogatories. They are not doing anything to benefit anyone other than Donald. And this man was smart. I don't know who it is, but this man was smart to walk away. He's already seen the damage that Donald Trump brings to people's lives, like mine, like other people. He was smart to walk away. You know, Michael, I have to ask you, you know, Rudy Giuliani is in the middle of the damages portion of that defamation trial. When you look at between the gag order in New York and what's going on with Rudy Giuliani's case, it must hit pretty close to home. Well, it hits very close to home in the amount of vile that gets spewed on social media as a result of Donald's uh, post, as well as the comments by Alina Haba, Chris Kais, Cliff Robert. It doesn't just affect me, it affects my family. And personally, to tell you the truth, Laura, I would prefer not even to be involved in the upcoming Alvin Bragg case, if at all possible. Mm -hmm. Let somebody else handle it. I've already done, in my opinion, more than my share. Let somebody else now step up and have to deal with the repercussions. That says a lot. You have a subpoena, but that tells a lot about what it's like to be a witness, a testifying witness in these cases. And that's really the point of all the conversations around the gag orders and not intimidating or threatening witnesses for those very reasons. Michael Cohen, thank you for stopping by. Now, good to see you, Laura.